So you have a really messed up cork, or you have a bottle of wine that's really old and the cork is very brittle and you don't know how to open it. The corkscrew will shatter that all over the place. What you gonna do? I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna get an osso, okay? You're gonna get an osso and you're gonna open this without a traditional corkscrew. So stand by, Wine by the Bay TV, coming right at you. Don't touch me, I'm gonna feed the lawyers. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Wine by the Bay TV. I'm your host, George Bachara. Uh, we are here in studio, kind of. I wanted to uh, do a little demonstration of how to use an osso, okay? I have a uh, cut in for this so you can actually see it. Um, this is not a traditional wine tool. Um, it is a tool, I guess it was designed to uh, help with older bottles. Um, because as the bottles get older and older, the corks get more and more brittle. Obviously, a little bit of oxygen and the contact with the juice causes the cork to kind of disintegrate a little bit and then you can't put a cork through in it because it won't come out whole. It'll break up, it'll go into the wine. And if you're drinking, say, a thousand dollar bottle of wine you can hold it for 25 years, you obviously don't want to have a whole bunch of cork in it to screw up the taste, screw up the mouthfeel, and just give you a bad experience. So I'm going to show you how to use this also in lieu of a corkscrew, okay? So stand by. Okay, so we're gonna do kind of a hybrid here. Um, I have this uh, Muir Wood Chardonnay uh, 2021 from Monterey, California. And obviously, I'll take a still shot of that for you so you can see what it is. I bought it at Total Wine, I believe it was $15, $14.99. Um, 93 points, there was some sort of wine tasting board, uh, which is why I chose this wine. I chose it because, I, I mean, it didn't give me a person that had actually tasted the wine. It was like, a, I guess, some sort of wine panel. So I wanna see how they score stuff. Um, I'm not a big white wine fan. I say that over and over again. I seem to be drinking a lot of white wine. But anyway, um, this is a Chardonnay. I bought it actually because we're gonna have some pork tonight for dinner. Uh, my wife likes Chardonnay. She likes white wine. So I thought I would open this for her and then we'll, uh, well, she'll drink most of it and I'll have a little taste. So, um, but in the meantime, it gives me an excuse to show you how to use an also. So, um, we're going to pretend like we don't have a corkscrew at all. I'm going to actually use a butter knife to cut the capsule. So, I'll show you how I'm doing this here. So I'm just going to cut this capsule. Not exactly classy. But, unfortunately for us, we're gonna pretend that we don't have a corkscrew handy, even though really and truly, I mean, you can use this also with any bottle of wine. This is kind of my favorite wine tool. Um, and you can actually use the prongs on the end to cut this, but it's a little difficult and I don't wanna stick myself with these ends. Um, so I thought I'd just, uh, you know, use the butter knife. But obviously you can use a corkscrew first, cut the, uh, cut the capsule off and then go in with the also. So you can see here that the also has two prongs, a longer prong and a shorter prong. So what you do is you put the prongs into the cork, okay? So I wanna make sure you can see that. All right, you put the long side in first, and then you put the short side in. So I'm gonna do that until I can make contact. I'm not trying to pierce the cork, I'm trying to go next to it. Okay, so you see that? See how that is? Okay. So now at that length, I can put this other end in. Okay, and now that's made its way into the bottle. So once both ends are in, what you want to do is you're not trying to push the cork down. You're trying to rock this back and forth so it slides in between. Let me make sure you can see this. So you see what's going on? I'm kind of at this point right here. I've rocked the thing back and forth until it's kind of even with the with the lip of the bottle. And then what you do is you just turn it and pull. So you turn and pull, gently of course. Now this works better with an older cork. This is a pretty young cork, so it's pretty sturdy. 
it doesn't have the plot the give that an older cork would have so this one was a little more difficult than it probably should have been but you know you can't see this let me stand up for you here and get a good look at the bottle so you see what I'm doing by the way don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and don't forget to hit the uh, little bell icon so that you can get up-to-date information. Every time we drop a new episode, you'll know. That's my dogs, by the way. They want you to subscribe also. As you can see, now I'm completely out. Okay? And you can see the cork is kind of sitting right there in between the two toms and there's no actual cork in the bottle. So we're going to taste this wine in about uh, 20 minutes or so. I know usually it's two hours um, but this is a white wine and typically this white wine I mean this is not a you know a hundred a hundred fifty dollar bottle of Chardonnay so um, it's probably going to be in the bar either pre-opened or you're going to pour it right away after you get it. So I'm going to give it a few minutes to open up and then we'll... Okay, everyone. So we're back. It's been about 10 or 15 minutes, mostly 15 minutes. Um, I let this wine uh, breathe a little bit. By the way, it's sort of weird to be back in studio. I mean, I know I was in studio sort of over there about 15 minutes ago, but we haven't been shooting from this studio for the longest amount of time. So, I mean... It's kind of odd to be here. I've been out at restaurants, at uh, you know, wine shops, uh, wineries, all that kind of good stuff, which is great. But it's nice to be home too. So anyway, um, yeah, happy to be here in studio. I did forget to mention, again, because we're in studio and I'm probably out of practice, that uh, when, you, when you're when you done with this, you take the cork, which is very loose, and just it just kind of sits in between the two, right, like that. It's not connected in any way. So you just do this, and you pull the cork out. And then you can leave the cork on the side and just resheath your also. okay? So I was mentioning earlier that this is a uh, Muir Wood Chardonnay. Hopefully you can get a good look at it. So it's uh, Arroyo Seco Vineyards in Monterey, uh, 2021, 14.5 alcohol by volume, which is pretty high um, for a Chardonnay, for sure. Uh, but I've never had anything from your wood before. Like I said, it's uh, I believe it's $14.99. It might be $15.99. Obviously, I'll put a price in there in the description box, and I'll cut in a little picture of the bottle so you can see what's going on. Um, but, uh, you know, let's just get into this wine. I don't want to spend too much time on it, uh, but I did want to pick out something, like I said, that was scored by that uh, tasting panel. I don't know who was on the panel. Um, so I really don't know how good that score is going to be, but we're going to find out. So against the white, it's got a little greenish yellow tint to it. Um, it's not super light for a white wine, like a Sauvignon Blanc or something, but it's it's definitely on the lighter side for Chardonnay. I've seen some really dark, really golden Chardonnays. This is more of a, of a greenish yellow color. Um, so it bodes well for not too oaky a Chardonnay. I mean, I don't know. I've never tasted this wine before, like I said, um, but we're gonna give it a shot, so. Definitely got a little tropical on the nose. Um, oh, by the way, I am actually drinking out of a brandy sifter. I do this when I'm at home by myself uh, because it's just easier than, you know, washing a stem glass. Uh, these can go in the dishwasher really easily. By the way, if you do want to uh, buy any paraphernalia, any gear for drinking wine, like an also. Uh, this is not really for drinking wine unless you consider, you know, brandy a wine because it is kind of made of grapes, it's a spirit made from grapes. So brandy glass, wine glass, uh, traditional wine tools, whatever you need, uh, you know, go check out the links in the description box below. Uh, I have links to everything down there um, and you can shop for the holidays uh, while you're doing that or just shop for a birthday or shop for whatever or even for yourself. So I would drink it, but I wouldn't buy it. Um, and I have a feeling this is how this is gonna be. Yeah, definitely tropical. Uh, not as much of the citrus kind of flavor. Uh, maybe like a little Meyer lemon. Nothing too pungent, too acidic. Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say pineapple, but some papaya for sure. I mean, I'm smelling that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Some Definitely some papaya, but fresh papaya, not like a 
you know, like the papaya paste or something you find in a pastry. Let's give it a shot. It's pleasant. It's not gonna like change your life or anything. I mean, it has a little hint of alcohol that kind of comes, that doesn't, isn't apparent at first, then it kind of comes on a little bit and then it kind of backs away. 14.5, um, I'm not surprised you're feeling the alcohol. It's a little bit warm in my throat. Um, not violent or anything, uh, but then again, neither, is the fl neither are the flavors. I mean, it's pleasant to drink. It's not over buttery. It's nothing great. I mean, it's it's just okay. It kind of tastes like it smells. Um, although there's a little bit more alcohol. Let's give it another shot. By the way, this isn't ice cold. Um, I chilled it a little bit. Probably it's like uh, 58, 60 degrees. Um, but I wanted to be able to taste this in its, in its entirety for you. Um, let me see. One more shot. Well, the bottle says that it has a richness and depth. I disagree. It's more crisp. It's not overly crisp like a uh, like a Saint Blanc would be. But it's on the crisper side for a Chardonnay. Um, it's, it actually has a little bit more acidity than I was expecting, although not a citrus taste. Definitely not a citrus taste. The papaya is there. Um, like I said, just a little hint of Meyer lemon. No oak, not overly vanilla, not overly buttery. So if you're looking for something that pairs with a lighter dish, um, this is definitely a good way to go. I don't know if I do sound with this. I mean, you could, um, but if you have like a rich buttery sauce and looking to drown it in more wine, uh, not so much. Um, I would say to my palate, this is better than a buttery Chardonnay, better than, you know, like a Rumbauer style. Rumbauer style for me is a little bit too heavy, a little bit too mouthfeely. Um, I'm still tasting this wine, by the way, although not as intensely as I was when I first drank it. So it definitely has a lingering finish to it. But again, nothing spectacular. It's a $15 bottle of wine, it drinks like a $15 bottle of wine. Um, 93 points is very aggressive. I don't know who was on this panel, but they were either paid off or, you know, it was just like feeling good about life and they were happy and they left you 93 points. This is a 90 point wine, 90 points. Decent, excuse me, drinkable. Uh, you know, but definitely nothing to run to the store and get a case of. You know, actually, that's a lie. If if you're doing a holiday party with a bunch of people you don't know that you just want to serve a first course wine with, you could probably do that. Um, you did this with a shrimp cocktail, it would be fine. Uh, you did this, um, you know, with a little past hors d'oeuvre, maybe uh, like a cracker with some, or, or like a vegetable plate, like a dip plate. This wouldn't be too bad with that. So once again, 90 points. I'd drink it, but I wouldn't buy it. Okay, um, $15, not too bad. It is what it is. Uh, watch the next videos coming up. I don't know where they're going to be. They're either up here or down here. Thanks for watching. Uh, Wine by the Bay TV, and we'll see you again next time.